In this segment, we're going to deal with a more rigid spinal orthotic device. Um, uh, the device is called the Raptor System. Uh, it's a rigid device um, that features a, a very unique uh, pull mechanism. Uh, it's a mechanical advantage brace, but it, it really helps to provide the great compressive support and distribute those forces over a broad area. Uh, it's called the Crest which is continuously responsive equalizing support technology from core products. Uh, so we'll just go through the fitting of this device. Uh, the application would be uh, preoperative or postoperative for significant lumbosacral um, spine dysfunction or injury. Uh, and, and now we're with an orthotic device starting to control some motion. Uh, and this device is actually four braces in one. So let's go through the process. Uh, the device comes um, obviously, the garment part of it um, is, is this um, here. There's also a removable posterior panel that can be removed and uh, a little bit of a step down brace can then be used. Um, and, and then a rigid anterior panel can then be removed. And finally, you're left with just the support of the system uh, without the rigid control. So there's actually four braces in one. We'll go through the fitting process on this, uh, talk about how it's customized to the patient and, and patient education. And so we're gonna start with measurements. You wanna see the patient from the side, not the front or the back. So you can see the fullest part of the buttocks. You will measure at that fullest part of the buttocks. And, and again, as opposed to just a gentle, a gentle uh, pressure, uh, you wanna really crank down on that and get a very, very snug hip measurement. Uh, you'll also want for your medical documentation a waist measurement which will be taken above the crest of the ilium, uh, below the costal flare, and if there's an issue just have the patient do a lateral bend. You'll see the crease form there. That's the nat natural waistline. So you get a circumferential measurement there. For the posterior height measurement, uh, from the inferior angle of the scapula, uh, come to center spine and come down two inches from that point. Get a measurement, length measurement from that point to the distal margin of the sacrum, um, and that would be the maximum height of any device you wanted to fit. Uh, that becomes part of your documentation. And surely, uh, you would start at, at the top of the flare at the xiphoid process, and if you could point to your symphysis pubis, that bone below your belly button, um, you get that length measurement, and that would be the anterior length measurement. Um, you would want the device to come, ideally, to about the level of the 10th rib, which was halfway between the xiphoid process and the inferior angle of the costal flare. The 10th rib is right in the middle, so you wouldn't want a device higher than that. So we have our measurements, we've met our documentation, um, we have the right size device, and so we're gonna do a couple of things before we actually fit the device. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the plastic panels, the rigid panels, uh, uh, come just flat. So you can shape these a little bit uh, just by overbending them and contouring them. And if you overbend that a little bit, they'll spring back, but they will retain some shape. Uh, so instead of just a flat panel here, uh, maybe overdid it. Uh, now we've got a device that contours to the patient's tummy, and that'll be a lot more comfortable for them. On the posterior panel, we want to do the same thing. Uh, let me put this back in. On the posterior panel, we want to do the same thing and, and pre-shape it. Um, you can see that, again, it comes as a flat panel, so it it's, says which is bottom here. So we want to shape this um, like this and just contour these wings a little bit and pre-shape those so that it's just not sitting flat on the patient's back. Um, just pre-shape it and it'll hold that shape and, and make the device more wearable for the patient while giving them great support. So you can see now we've added in a little bit of contouring uh, to, to hug that back a little bit. Do this just a little bit more. Um, and the, the plastic will maintain that shape. So, um, so that's gonna be a lot more comfortable for the patient. This just sticks on to the support um, um, with, the, with the Velcro strap here. So again, it's marked bottom. Uh, this is the top of the device, so just line this up to the center of the brace, like that, and touch down in the middle, 
and that's now held on with Velcro. Uh, it's square to the, to the support. So here's the top, and that's what the bottom will look like. It's already contoured again. The front is already contoured, so this is now ready to fit to the patient. Um, part of the step-down process is this is the maximum level of support used post-operatively or immediate post-injury. Um, when the patient's ready to step down just a notch, we can take this out uh, and use this as our first step down. Uh, so you can see it's a much smaller piece of plastic. Again, this just lines up uh, and this is gonna help maintain a more neutral posture if it's put on in this direction. But if you want to, for whatever reason, induce just a little bit of more of an, an influence towards extension, then we can take this same panel and put it on horizontal so it fits right in the small of the back. And, and that will help the patient maintain a little bit more of an extension posture in their lumbar spine. So that can go on either way. But we'll start with this, which we would usually do post-op or post-injury. Get that aligned, touch the Velcro down. And now we can fit this to the patient. And if we see the patient from the posterior, uh, we usually start high and come down so the bottom of the support is at the level of the distal margin of her sacrum uh, or at the top of the crease of her buttocks. Make sure it stays square and then come around. And there are thumb loops on this guy. So we can put a thumb loop here. We would teach the patient how to do this and a hand pocket here. Uh, again, making sure we get it at the right height, which would be the bottom of the support at the level of her symphysis pubis. So, and do the initial closure. Reasonably snug is fine. It doesn't have to be uh, tourniquet tight. Uh, making sure the Velcro doesn't touch her clothes, that it have a good overlap. And that anterior panel is centered nicely there. Now, we can take these uh, cinch tabs, I guess stabilize her hips, put pressure on that, and do this. And take this one, stabilize this pelvis, and they can cross over, lay on top of each other. The patient will generally feel more support if these cinch straps are relatively lower on the abdominal wall as opposed to being way up here. Uh, this will help support that lower abdomen area and take pressure off the spine. Uh, so we're teaching the patient how to do this. She's not feeling really great support yet because she can get better support th than I can. So we teach the patient how to take it off and that's simply undoing these and touch them way back here. Make sure they touch down way back there, excellent. Now open it up and just sort of roll your hand like that. Then I'll take it off. Excellent. And now if you'd mind taking it all the way off. If she's um, putting this on the bed stand at night, make sure to touch that down and then she can put it down and it won't get tangled with anything. So now she's gonna be taught how to put it back on. And so go ahead and open it up. And making sure she knows which is up and which is down. The, the core product label is always to the top again. So she would have the or right orientation. There you go. Make sure the posterior height is at the right height and she will just be able to learn how to feel that, where that is, and how it's, how it's gonna be centered on her back. Um, and then teach the patient, instead of drawing it straight across towards her upper abdom abdominal area, to, br to make the crossover down closer to her symphysis pubis. So we get it at the right height, and you can see she's getting a lot better compressive support than I can do to her. Um, so that looks like an excellent fit. Um, the abdominal panel built in here uh, is gonna give her tummy some great support. Then she can take those tabs, uh, pull away from her body, not to the front, but away from her body to get the best uh, pressure possible. And those lay over in either direction and it's now applied. Uh, so patient education is that easy. Uh, and there's a very significant amount of support in this brace now, uh, including a rigid anterior, rigid posterior panel. But now we need to see if the patient can function in the brace. If, if it hurts them when they're wearing it, they won't uh, wear it and, and it won't be compliant and it won't do them any good. So we'll ask the patient to go ahead and sit down. And what I'm especially interested in, especially with that rigid anterior panel, is does the bottom of the brace dig into her groin area? It should come to that area, but not dig in. 
uh, we're making contact there, but it's not digging it at all. So that's exactly the right height for that brace to be. We're picking up her lower abdominal wall and helping to support her, her spine. Um, the back of the brace should be about two inches off a firm setting surface. Uh, and that's correct back there. So if I can help you stand, there we go. So that's the, the fitting of the, of, the, um, uh, of the spinal orthotic device for heavy duty support, including not only compressive support, but some motion control uh, in the anterior posterior flexion extension um, uh, plane of uh, plane of motion. Um, how's that feel? A lot of support. Yep. I like the shape of the front. Yeah, it really helps to, to pre-shape that front a little bit as opposed to just leaving a flat anterior panel and, and shaping the posterior that really will help with patient compliance. And it's going to be different for every patient, so it, it's worth doing um, uh, on any fitting that you do of this device. <laughs>